Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at D2S with Leo Pang. He's going to talk today about curvilinear full-chip ILT. So Leo, we've been talking about full-chip inverse lithography technology for probably almost 10 years. Why is it taking so long? What's so hard? Well, uh, that's because we have to solve for the full-chip uh, problem. Uh, there are two uh, big roadblocks before. One is uh, uh, we have to write a mask uh, that uh, uh, the type of mask writer can write. Uh, so we have to simplify the mask patterns so that uh, it can uh, convert into those Manhattan patterns that uh, uh, VSB mask writer can write in a reasonable uh, time. Uh, the second is uh, uh, the curvilinear mask for full chip is the, just takes uh, way too long to compute uh, because uh, uh, to do this uh, full chip uh, first, uh, uh, LT has a much more degree of freedom than uh, OPC, uh, as you uh, as you know. The uh, for the most advanced node, uh, OPC uh, takes uh, tens of thousand CPUs and it runs a couple of days. Uh, then you can imagine LT takes a much longer. It's actually order of magnitude uh, longer than that. Uh, but on top of that, uh, because we have to uh, come up a solution for full chip. Uh, what people are doing is basically, uh, since uh, each CPU can only handle a small area, so uh, it will calculate the small area, then uh, clean it up so that it satisfies the mask rules. Then it has to convert that into a pattern that VSB type of uh, mask writer can actually write. Uh, so this was the problem with divide and conquer, right? You really had to stitch everything together at the end otherwise. Right, exactly, exactly. So you basically uh, process, so for each CPU, you take a small area, uh, you calculate the solution. Uh, once you convert them into a Manhattan pattern, you redo the optimization since the pattern is already changed. But uh, at that point, uh, we have to put together all of the solution uh, from each partition so that we get a solution for the full chip. Then this comes to the most uh, challenging part, or it's a really difficult piece, is what we call stitching. Uh, basically, you can imagine each small area is uh, uh, optimized or calculated separately from the beginning to the end. Then we put those uh, uh, solutions together, we got the stitching errors. So why don't we take a look at that in depth? Yeah, sure. So Leo, what are we looking at here? Yeah, here I'm showing an example of this uh, stitching error if we uh, do it in a conventional way. So first, uh, what you are looking at here, uh, this is uh, uh, basically what you are seeing uh, is a wafer target, is a random contact. Then uh, those contours, the right contours, are the uh, curvilinear ILT uh, solution. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, black line in the middle is actually the boundary between the left partition and the right partition. Uh, as I just uh, uh, said, uh, in conventional LT, uh, those uh, each partition is actually processed uh, separately. Uh, at the end, you put them together. Although they do have some buffer, but uh, uh, still, uh, you know, they were processed uh, uh, separately. That's why when you look at the solution generated from the left partition, you see this uh, uh, assist feature in the middle, which is supposed to get the other piece from the right partition as well. But you look at the uh, IoT solution from the right partition, it actually didn't generate uh, that uh, state feature. So that's why when you put them together for full chip, then uh, you get the issue on the boundary. That's called stitching error. Uh, another very common uh, stitching error uh, is like this. Uh, you have this uh, main feature, uh, but uh, the IoT uh, solution from the left and from the right, uh, they are slightly different. So you have those uh, jocks. So those are the kind of like a stitching area you have to fix. And the, the way you fix them is uh, uh, you actually take this uh, whole region and uh, redo IoT, right? So that will fix the problem uh, at this uh, stitching boundary. But uh, as you can imagine, uh, well, firstly, uh, that takes a really long time because uh, each uh, partition is uh, relatively small, so the uh, this uh, uh, area that have, you have to redo optimization is quite large. And secondly, uh, uh, y y when you redo this, you actually create uh, additional seating boundaries. So the problem is uh, never end. And how big are those features? Bring that up to scale for us. What are the, what's the size of this? 
Yeah, so uh, what we are looking at, uh, uh, like the main feature, uh, this uh, random contact, uh, they're about like a um, wafer uh, dimension, is about like a 50 to 100 nanometer in that range. Uh, those uh, assist features, uh, they, they are around like 40 nanometers on wafer. And you also have multiple layers of this too, right? So one of the problems is they have to be very precise because otherwise when you add another mask to it, you run into problems. Right, that, that's kind of like a, uh, the overlay issue. Uh, you have to, that's why you actually need the IoT because you actually want to shoot those uh, feet, uh, contact uh, exactly at the, uh, at the right location and also they're at the right size. So when you overlay them with another layer, they actually are on top of each other. Otherwise, uh, you've got create an issue on the circuit. You also have an enormous amount of data that you're processing here too, right? Yeah. So how do you speed that up to the point where it's doable in a reasonable amount of time? Yeah, so uh, this time uh, we did, uh, we totally solved uh, the problem at the D2S. So we came up with uh, a solution, uh, it's an approach very different uh, from the conventional approach. Uh, first, uh, uh, we use a GPU acceleration uh, because GPU is a single instruction, multiple data. So in the latest GPU, you have uh, over 5,000 uh, uh, cores that you can actually calculate something as long as you, do, uh, you are doing the same operation they can do in parallel. Uh, but uh, we didn't stop there. Uh, we actually came up with uh, a very innovative idea to solve this uh, stitching issue. So, so basically, uh, as you can imagine, uh, you have uh, one GPU, it can handle certain area. Uh, actually, GPU has much bigger memory. Therefore, uh, the partition uh, compared to what CPU can handle is actually much bigger. Therefore, the, uh, this, uh, the boundary area that if you have to do, re, uh, do the uh, stitching, re, do you do the stitching, is actually relatively really small. Uh, but we didn't stop there. We actually came up with this idea. We say, okay, if you can create a, a virtual gigantic uh, uh, GPU, uh, if you make the GPU larger, uh, as you can imagine, you can actually handle a bigger area, right? Uh, if you just uh, keep increasing that uh, virtual gigantic GPU at a certain point, that one partition basically becomes your full chip. So if we do that, that means uh, we don't have those uh, uh, stitching boundaries anymore, right? The full chip is all solved at once. So we don't, uh, <coughs> this will be much cleaner solution and run much faster. What do you have to do to the algorithms to make that run? Because Obviously, the, the algorithms as they existed maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, when we started talking about this problem were a lot different than they are today. Uh, yeah, so uh, first uh, uh, here, we are trying to target uh, this uh, new type of mask writer because now the multi-B mask writer uh, is available. Uh, so they can actually write those uh, curvilinear patterns. Uh, so that we don't have to do the Manhattan uh, uh, uh anymore. Uh, secondly, we actually have a different approach to solve the inverse problem, uh, and uh, uh, later on I can show you the, uh, the some of the results. You can see the like in terms of uh, uh, symmetry, it uh, looks uh, actually really good, uh, and also we already integrated uh, those uh, mask rules uh, into IoT, so it will come up a solution that satisfy uh, mask rules uh, is uh, curved linear as well. Is it only time that you're worried about with conventional partitioning versus the curvilinear ILT, or is there other 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 advantages as well? Well, uh, uh, so that's the biggest advantage. That means uh, the solution uh, you get uh, doesn't have those problems, but that actually helps to uh, make the uh, runtime much faster. Uh, but uh, on top of that, I think our main contribution is uh, by optimizing our core design co-designing the software and the hardware. Uh, we specially designed this uh, sixth generation CDP uh, actually to solve this uh, uh, problem. Uh, it has uh, like a one petaflop uh, computing power, so it's uh, huge. So that uh, we can actually solve the full chip uh, IoT problem just in one day. Uh, I said that at the very beginning, even for OPC, it takes uh, quite a few days for tens of thousand CPUs to do full chip, right? And this is a IoT, and we can do it in one day. So this is a very significant. So Leo, what are we looking at here? Yeah, so uh, we talk, the reason we are talking about uh, IoT, because IoT is a rigorous 
uh, our mathematical way to start from the wafer target to get the optimal mask, uh, which is supposed to give you the largest process window. Especially, uh, uh, there are numerous studies has shown in the past is that uh, uh, those curved linear uh, ILT uh, should give you the <coughs> the best process window. So uh, we did an evaluation this time as well uh, with our partner Micron. Uh, so here, this is a random contact layer, and uh, uh, we basically comparing uh, the OPC print uh, with uh, our curved linear ILT print. Uh, so the left side. Uh, was processed uh, uh, using their uh, process of record, the OPC, with their model. Uh, and it's a printed, uh, the wafer is a printed uh, in this kind of a matrix. So they basically print the same pattern at a different uh, focus from a minus uh, 60 nanometer to 60 nanometer. They also uh, change the dose. So the, uh, the one in the center, this is a kind of like the nominal condition. Then they vary. Uh, focus, they also vary the dose. Um, uh, and uh, then, uh, so first uh, you can see all the wafer print uh, at the different uh, process con conditions. Uh, and uh, you see we definitely print much better, uh, especially at the, uh, when the process changes. Uh, what do those uh, random contacts do? What, what changes there? Oh, uh, well, those uh, random contact uh, is basically, uh, in the design, is actually to co connect uh, uh, the metal layers uh, with the, the gate. Uh, but, uh, uh, so you want to print them uh, uh, really good, uh, but uh, you look at uh, uh, this uh, comparison, you can see uh, OPC, when process condition changes, uh, they barely uh, print, right? The contacts become really small, so that, that means uh, if you put that on wafer, uh, the circuit won't be able to work, right? You, you want uh, all the contacts printed uh, pretty much at the same size. Uh, that's what you see in all print. And uh, uh, also we measured the uh, process window, uh, and uh, we highlighted uh, uh, those uh, conditions uh, if the uh, CD variation is uh, within uh, plus minus 10%, uh, that's called process window, right? So you can see here, this is uh, the OPC process window, and uh, this is uh, uh, our true mask ILT uh, process window, which is uh, more than 100% larger uh, than uh, OPC. How much does this impact yield? So what are we talking about in terms of numbers? Oh. Uh, there is uh, definitely a correlation between uh, process window to yield. Uh, it's hard to uh, get the, uh, the accurate number, uh, but uh, in general, you want to uh, minimize the impact uh, of your uh, wafer print uh, to the process variations. Uh, because in general, the plus minus 60% nanometer, that's what uh, the scanner can control uh, their focus. Right, so you want uh, your print like within that range all look good. Otherwise, uh, you, you know, there are certain percent of the uh, circuit will be bad. Right, and from a design side, that allows you to reduce your margin too, right? Because this typically is built into the process. Oh, right, right. This will actually uh, allow the uh, designer uh, there too. One, one is uh, they can uh, design something uh, it will has a more resilient, uh, but also it will allow them to uh, make the design tighter that will have a smaller uh, you know, die size. Uh, it will run faster as well, yeah. So coming at this from a high level, yeah. let's sum all this up. What does this bring to the market? Well, this will basically is a key lithography technology that actually can uh, print things smaller and also improve the yield, uh, which is a most important thing. Uh, and uh, on top of that, because all those uh, uh, companies, especially uh, foundries, they, have, uh, they are under a big pressure uh, from their customer to uh, reduce the turnaround time. So if we can uh, do curve linear IoT for full chip, which will give much uh, better quality of the result than OPC, but even in a shorter time than uh, OPC, uh, this brings significant value to them. Leo Peng, thanks for a great explanation. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much.